And we are back after some... Oh, I gotta fix the Discord audio. Someone say something. Nope. I gotta fix it. It's on the wrong one. Hold on, because my computer... My computer decided to reset while I went upstairs to... Go to the bathroom. So that's fun. Let's try that. There we go. Now we have everyone's audio. Sorry about that, friends. So please, please be sure to refresh and all that so that it still counts your view and all of that and tell everyone who was watching to refresh and do all that good stuff. Um, Cause we are back. All right. So let me just get my notes back again because I decided to close. Second. All right. Where we last left, the five of you had discovered the passphrase and summoned the obsidian boat. And here it is. The five of you have climbed in and it is still sitting there awaiting your command. Ethan, mm -hmm. as we waited for the boat, could I have looked at what I stole? I was about to say, because of the uh, conceits we have with this game, because there are so many magic items, um, the wands that you got were a very helpful wand for justifying this conceit, and that is a wand of detect magic. Nice. So that is helpful. You also, hold on one sec, my notes are reloading. You also got a, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, so a wand of detect magic, a wand of dispel magic, and a scrying ball. Great. Um, I'm going to just sit down, lay out the items, and uh, just keeping the bottle of wine. Um, anyone can have any of these things. That one there, it makes you see cool magical stuff. That one there makes you just see magic stuff. And that one you can spy on the, um, I have no idea. So anyone want one? Did you get these from the treasure room? Yeah. How did you? But we were just. Huh? I you picture think that Daphne is very serious about trying to say the word, look for the boat, not mess it up. I'm Got fully it. locked in. <laughs> and that's why Crunch I appreciate is gonna take about the, you. Crunch is going to take the ball and look at it. Uh, it tastes a little acrid. Not sure why. And a little sour. Yeah, I would do that. Put that in my pocket and, um, you don't want to know what was in my pocket beforehand. Cool. Cool. Uh, huh. It looks like I can see myself in it. And I'm going to look for myself to see that. Oh. It's me. But where I am now What? What? <laughs> did you say your own name? I did. <laughs> okay, wonderful. I said Crunch can see Oh, I could Crunch can see myself in it, you know. And, uh, since I presume you would automatically fail that wisdom saving throw, yeah, you are just, like, now looking at yourself from a third-person perspective. Like the fun that we have every time we see a screen that with a security camera. <gasps> Wait, you can spy on people with that thing? I, I guess so. Could you spy on the queen? Uh, we could see where she is. We could see if she's alive. We could see that everything we are doing is worthwhile. Can we see the queen? You can certainly try. All right, so what I got to roll for? All right, so what you have Emma to... Emma ass. <laughs> um, so you 
have a very good knowledge of this target. Obviously. You don't have anything physical of her, but fortunately, she is not trying to make this safe. Um, so, one sec. There you go. Okay. You, which one of you is doing this, first of all? Okay, crunch. There is a, hold on one sec, there we go. You see a humanoid. She has long silver hair, long pointed ears, and lies on a bed. The room she's in is made of wood. Looks like human filth. But even though that is the largest thing that you see, she is slightly blurry to you. Out of focus. So is the rest of the room. There is only one thing that you see that is in clear crystal image. And it is a necklace around this woman's neck that lays on her chest. In the center of the necklace, a bright gleaming sapphire. And as you stare into this scrying ball, and focus on that sapphire as it seems to want you to do. You feel the presence of your queen. And you know in that moment that she is trapped inside that sapphire. Uh, so, do you want Crush to tell you the good news or bad news? Good news? Found the queen. Fantastic. Where is she? She's alive? I yeah, do that's, that's the bad news. See, she's inside this little crystal necklace, this sapphire. It, or, I don't... This blue stone here, this blue rock, uh... But it's around this lady's like neck. Um, she's got like pointy ears, and you said blonde or blonde or silver hair. Silver hair, and you, as you are saying this, and you continue to look. Not only can you feel the presence of your queen as the image expands, focusing closer and closer and closer on this blue gem, you can see your queen inside of it. About that big. You you said blue gem, right? Blue rock, yeah. Blue rock. Obviously, it would be the blue scales if it's blue. They must but, have her. But it's around some big lady's neck. It's got Maybe pointy ears. that's why they suck so much, because the elves control them. Think about it. Has she ever transmorphed into something before? To where she would use the necklace to become something. Dragons are certainly known to take on humanoid forms as serves their interest. You've never seen your queen's humanoid form. Why would she ever display that to you? So you don't know for sure whether this is she? You have no idea. Well, I guess we just gotta keep going. Not knowing any more information, we can't do anything for her. If we had more information, maybe we could 
change our, our quest, but at the moment what we can do for her is protect what she has. It seems kind of small picture, though, to go protect a heart of gold and shit when she's literally trapped, when she needs to be saved. Maybe that's where the last portal went. Maybe it brought us to where she is. Not that I'm going to go back, Daphne, but maybe that's where we have to go after. I, it does sound like the queen needs our help. Definitely. So Maybe we try to get the boat to move. So that we can go towards the pile. And then from there, try to find the queen. Because, like, what if we save her and we failed at the first mission? She still might not be happy with us. Uh, that, that makes sense. Hmm. Yeah. I will pick up the last two wands, pocket them, and jump in the boat. <laughs> all right. You all climb in. The boat stands still. Until you utter the command word once again. And smoothly, it releases itself from the pier and begins to move down the river of lava. Could I please have... <laughs> I'm going to roll a die to decide who rolls a die. Crunch, could you please roll me a d4? Which one's that one? The one with four sides. Got it. The, da <laughs> the danger dice. The danger the danger die. rock. The danger rock. I rolled a one. That's not a bad thing. That's not a bad... In this case, that is not a bad thing. I rolled an 18 so, last time. <laughs> could I please have Onyx roll me a d4 once again? But because he rolled a one, Crunch, Onyx is only going to roll this once. Great. Oh no, not a d4 on the ground. Worst thing ever. Is the d4 the one that looks like a triangle? Yes. Now, how do you read it, though? Okay, I get it. One. Yep. A one. Damn. All right. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> this crunch. river twists and turns. It starts off sluggish, but soon begins to pick up speed. And eventually, you all are having to hang on and for fear of being, as it takes these turns, being lost over the side. And as you are here, the the area that this passes through doesn't have a ton of headroom, even for kobolds. There are several times where it passes so low that you almost have to lie down in the boat. And as you're hanging on around one of these turns, you barely notice a stalactite coming right at you. Could all of you please make me dexterity saving throws? All right, let's hear him. 11. Fail. Uh, 12. Fail. Oh, Fuck. I did forget to mention for what it's worth because I was distracted by the whole uh, stream going out thing. Each of you gets an additional two luck points for that whole exchange that happened at the Alchemist facility. So you all now have five total, just for what it's worth. So, Xandrus. It's 20. Pass. Onyx. How do you do this with your dexterity number and then what you rolled? God. Who says? Yes. Uh, so if you look at your character sheet along the yeah. left, there's a box yeah. that says saving throws. Oh, the plus, the plus, yeah. the plus five. Exactly. Okay. Um, uh, 21. Whew. Pass. And Crunch. Crunch has an 18. 18. Pass. Daphne and Kibbles, did the two of you want to use any luck points? If so, I'm going to need you to tell me how 
you luckily managed to avoid it, but did you want to use any? Um, so this is like to not run into a stalactite? Yes. So keep in mind luck points, the way they're used is they are flat out added to your roll. So if you rolled so an 11 even and you if add I one, added all, all five, I would only make a 16. Correct, but who knows what the DC is. As of right now, we know okay. it's between 12 and, what, like 18? Okay. Kibbles, do you know what you're doing? Huh? Okay. I'm not sure yet, so go ahead. <laughs> I'm going to use four of my luck points to give two to Daphne. So two for you takes you from a 12 to a 14. And the two that you gave to Daphne count as a one, so that raised Daphne from an 11 to a 12. Well, I gave, I used four. Right. And I'm giving oh, Daphne. Oh, you're using one. all four for Daphne. Oh, oh okay. I'm going, to, I'm going to shove her down. Epic. So in that moment, you manage to shove Daphne's head out of the way, but as a consequence, you aren't quite able to avoid the stalactite yourself, and you, damn, take 16 bludgeoning <gasps> damage as this quickly moving boat just- Can I, <clears throat> do, do I get a reaction? What would you like to do? Could I, are, are, is, is Kipples wearing armor? Oh. Could I tap her and quickly cast mage armor? Cause it's at will? So, being at will just means you can do it a lot. It's not how quick yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. It's still an action. Yeah, and also I mage armor oh, so I wouldn't react. won't help with a saving throw, no, unfortunately. No, it wouldn't. It would just be a DC. Yeah, I don't think I could do anything. So Ana, or Kibbles, could you please describe? You stay Oh, I guess in, I have shield. Is that a reaction? That is a reaction, but it's only for yourself. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I don't think I can do anything. Kibbles, could Your you describe so this as Kibbles gets absolutely laid out by this low-hanging stalactite? So I'm going to assume that Daphne would be at the very front of the boat, okay. kind of like directing it just because she said the word. Um, and I'm going to notice the stalactite tight and... Uh, I'm going to rush forward, putting both my hands on her shoulders, just shove her completely down and just take it straight to the face. <laughs> and just, uh, poor Kibbles is just laid out in the center of the boat. Like, their little kobold snout in almost a cartoonish way just crumpled a little bit, at least an inch shorter now. Um, ow. Uh, <laughs> After seeing this happen, uh, Xandris goes, <laughs> oh, 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 ah, hold on. Xandris, do something. Uh, and it's going to do uh, cure wounds at the second level for you. All right, roll that healing. <laughs> oh, no. Are you okay? You don't have to method act, Kibbles. Ah. <laughs> 15 damage recovered. 15 healing. 15, okay, great. Xanders. You almost ate shit, no. Xanders. Bro, you, you almost hit it. You run to the okay? section where uh, Kibbles and Daphne are with Onyx and Crunch looking on, and Xanders, because of your position, you're the one who sees as you say this word of healing as Kibbles' snout just kind of pops back into place. You see ahead. First there was a stalactite now behind you, but there is now a section of sharp rocks jutting out of the lava ahead of you. It looks like it can be avoided. You also might be able to try to destroy it, but you don't have long. What are you all doing? Firebolt. Uh, seeing the firebolt, I'll also cast uh, an Eldridge Blast. Wonderful. Could each of you please roll me to hit because it does have an AC. I'm on standby with my random wand. 25. 21. Both hit. Roll me damage. Stand by with my wand of random chaos. Crunch. 10 damage. Got it. Um, sorry. Oh. No, you're good. How close? 
I'm sorry. She <laughs> had a D10 ready. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. That is also a 10. 10. <laughs> Huge sections of these jagged rocks <laughs> go splashing into the lava river. Some lava splashing up uncomfortably close to your boat as a result, but it is still there. There is still a small section that you feel like if it were to go into it would definitely do some damage to your boat. Crunch. Crunch is going to take the... F- Cr- Crunch would like to hit things. Crunch is going to fix the thing. Okay, uh, so you're on so the boat that's coming at it. Are you basically intending on just waiting until the last second to Pretty attack much. it? Pretty much. I love this. Roll yep. me to hit. It's still on my want. It's true. Well, no time to use it. Oh. Oh, yeah, you will. 21. 21 will hit. Roll that damage. Cool. Six plus three, uh, nine. Could you please explain exactly what it looks like? Because you have to, it is in your way, in this river of lava, and you have to, while on the boat, destroy it before the boat hits it. Paint me this picture. Okay, so Crunch, Crunch steps up the bat, uh, pulls baby out, whips baby around, just double hands it, clutches it and just waits so as you could hear the lava and like the rest of them panicking you hear Van singing uh, (laughs) singing Kibble's nose back them just popping their magic and everything just everything gets quiet and Crunch closes his eyes waits for it sees it and then just cleaves it to the point where we, I hit, Crunch hits it and it moves the boat out of the way once we hit it. So we watch this from the opposite side as the camera is, the rock is between the camera and the boat and we see as Crunch is there and we see as Crunch swings causing this huge eruption of dust and lava and for a second we can't see the boat until it... <laughs> emerges clear and free of the rock, man, with three hit points to spare, a total of 27, or two hit points to spare, you did 29 in total. But the uh, obsidian boat lands in the lava. You all grab on, Kibble's sitting up, you're rubbing your nose a little bit, and there it is. As the boat starts to slow down, you see a sister obsidian pier to the one that you left just about ten minutes ago waiting for you. The boat smoothly pulls up to this pier. There is a identical sending stone. And there is there are these two very large stone doors very large one of which is only minutely open but because of their size and yours that's plenty of space for you all to walk through even just open that much for it well this I think do we want to go Kibbles, before you go, thank you for saving me. Yeah, first off, amazing job to everybody. I mean, I was along for the ride. You guys did a lot of work there. Just fist bumps all around. Are you okay, by the way, Kibbles? Thank you, Kibbles. Sorry. I've been rude to you a lot lately, and I just don't like being bossed around, and I just, I'm sorry. No, you don't have to be sorry. Thank you for helping me. Okay, are you okay? I kind of shoved you hard onto this bench. I think so. Okay. Shall we go? And I'll start leading towards the door. (laughs) As you all approach, you hear them. 
somehow those blue scales made it here first. <laughs> Hear them inside. And as you walk through this gap between these two enormous stone doors, you get a look at the big pile itself. What you see is a sight seen by few living creatures. Veins of glowing crystal crisscross the walls of this cavern, the walls and the ceiling. This cavern is enormous, hundreds of feet across in both directions, and the light from these glowing veins bounces off the faces of millions upon millions of coins. Gold, silver, copper, with every type of coin from every city and kingdom in the Forgotten Realms, or in the Sword Coast at minimum. These coins form hills, mountains of treasure that cover the entire floor of this cavern. Amid the coins, there are glittering gems and chests shimmering with magic auras. And yet, even with this incredible sight, you can't help but be distracted by the sound of the blue scales in here. And by the sound of it, there are a few. From where you currently stand, just inside this door, you can't see any, but you hear their yapping. You hear the sound of coins against coins. You hear laughter, bickering, prayer. But all you see are mountains of gold that block your vision too far into the cavern. Can I not pull out the wand of magic detection uh -huh. and give it a little, little whip? Oh, there's a Is it? lot. Um, you have to be able to see it because what it gives you really is an aura. It doesn't let you like see through walls and detect magic. You're able to detect the magical aura of something you are seeing. Um, oh no, you just sense the presence within 30 feet. Uh, within 30 feet of you, not a lot. But there is so much magic in this space that you are still hit with the overwhelming knowledge of the fact that there is a lot of magic in here. It's beautiful. Wow. Is, are these the stars? I'm going to just be staring at the crystals above. No. No. Something doesn't smell right. You guys, be on your guard here. I can hear them. Can I stealth? Sure. Go ahead and make me a stealth check as you move in. Mm, 22. 22. They are definitely not actively listening, so they, none of them has a passive 22, so you manage to stealth in your little feet not making a lot of noise or causing the coins beneath your clawed feet to shift you stealth in and truly it is like being in a hilly area as things become visible as you step around these piles giant mounds of gold and silver and the first thing you see as you stealth forward you see two things. One off to your left, one off to your right. Off to your left, at a huge pile of gold that is on against one of the walls, you hear and then see... First you hear a small avalanche of coins, followed by the sound of yee as two blue scales are sledding down this slope of coins, riding what looks like an elaborately ornate shield. 
and they reach the bottom. One of them, they wrestle with each other for a second. One of them grabs the shield and they start to hoof it back up the hill of coins to go for a second round. To the right, something entirely different. It's off a little ways, about 60 feet, as are the kobold sledding on the shield. There is a small stone pavilion that rises amongst the hills of gold. And floating under its domed roof, suspended about 15 feet in the air above the ground, you can see a staff that emanates an incredibly powerful aura. You also see a handful of blue scales who seem to be trying to work out a plan for how to acquire it, which right now seems they seem to have settled on the brilliant plan of Cobalt Ladder and are beginning to climb up on shoulders <laughs> and go falling backwards. Damn it! Again! You're a terrible base. Shoot the sledding kobolds. You want to shoot them? Can I shoot at one of them? Absolutely. Yes. Roll me uh, roll me an attack and you will have advantage because you are unseen. Yeah, maybe. Oh, less than good. I'll definitely say that. Even with advantage? Even with advantage, I got a one and a three. So that's only like an eight, I think. Yeah. In that case, you watch as your shot goes wide and just tinks into the gold pile. They don't notice. They are screaming and scrabbling up. They rolled I'm just gonna like tuck I'm gonna tuck my uh crossbow back in as if I didn't do anything and hope and pray nobody actually saw what I was doing. And I'll wander back to you guys. Okay, so God, are blue scales scales ever dumb. But there's a couple of them just fucking around in the gold over there, doing some sledding or some shit on a really pretty shield. But I used the magic wand of magic seeing or whatever, and there is a beautiful staff, and I feel like you guys should have that staff. So we should go kill the blue scales and get the staff. I think we're trying to protect this area more than loot this area. But that was just my main intention of coming to this area. (laughs) But we have spent this entire time looting the areas that we were supposed to be protecting. So why is this any different? We can always put it back after we slaughter every single blue scale with it. Well, because this... Well, aren't the blue scales here? Yeah. We take this down, kill them all, litter this place with their corpses, Put the staff back. Hey, Ethan, how far can we see? Can I, like, right now, from where I'm standing, or from where she was when she had walked in, see the pavilion to where I could portal to just the pavilion? You would have to make a stealth check to get up to where she was unnoticed, because the rest of you were still chilling right by the door, concealed Mm -hmm. by the mounds of gold. If you want to go up where they are visible, you can either do so and risk being seen, or you can stealth up. Your choice. You could also, potentially, since it is at will, use the portal gun uh, to do so, and I would give you advantage on your stealth check, because you don't have to physically move, you just appear there. Which also means if you aim it right, you might be able to use it to just see. through the portal, does that mean we can see the pavilion, which means if you see through the portal and see the pavilion through the portal, you technically see the pavilion and you can just summon the portal right there? If you summon the no, pavilion because through the portal. You have to get rid of the original portal before you can do another. Okay, so no inception portals. Love Fair the Who has the portal gun? Because I have an arcane <laughs> I love that we're calling it the gun. You do! You do! <laughs> That's what you called it. I know. I've shifted to it, too. 
I have the rod of arcane gate, yes. so it doesn't. It. Yeah, that's the portal gun. Oh, okay. <laughs> Use its proper terminology. <laughs> okay. I forgot gun. the proper terminology. I'm like, yeah, okay. the portal, the portal gun. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna use it at will. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be bold, and we're just gonna do this. All right. So, what are you doing? I'm going to stealth my way in and portal over to the guys who are um, trying to get the the rod. Okay. Wonderful. So. First, make me a stealth check. Question for the rest of you. As Onyx is planning on making a portal and has communicated this, a gate, are the rest of you going with Onyx, or are you staying back? We'll definitely follow her through the I'll portal. Go. Yeah. I'll go. All right, then I need a group stealth check, please. 18. 18, got it. This is still against their passives because they are very distracted. So, you don't have to beat much. I got a 10. 17. 15. All five of you pass, because their passive perception is 8. So, Onyx, you stealth forward. You see the splash of coins from behind the sled as two, or behind the shield as two kobolds are having a time of their life. Um, But then you see that staff that Kibbles described. And it really is emanating power. And you manage to get around, get your back to another pile of gold so that you have a line of sight to where you're wanting to put this gate. So that's my next question. It is a uh, 15 foot or so across pavilion. It is a stone pavilion, so it's just supported by columns. Are you trying to put this portal like dead center in the middle of it? Are you trying to put it next to it? Where? I'm trying to put it against one of the columns behind them. Behind them. So against one of the columns. Got it. So then... Bad thing? (laughs) No, no, no. Very clever. Very clever. Um, So you bide your time. You wait for the opportunity. and you manage to land one of the two parts of the gate on one of the uh, pillars. And then you can set the other one wherever you would wish around you, I assume on the floor, because there aren't really many other convenient places. You find a barely empty patch of (laughs) ground where there aren't too many coins, and you put the other gate there. And there's a second where you hear the tinkling of coins from the pavilion as a few coins that were on the ground just fall on the pillar, just but they are very dialed in. So you now have a portal, but you feel like the t- the time period where they won't notice it and therefore see like this weird hole in space is probably not too long. I'm going to step through the portal and pull out my wand and use it. <laughs> okay, this is the wand of wonders, yeah. Yes. Yes. All it is the, right. It's the random random roll wand. Damn right it is. Woo-hoo! Could you please roll me a d100, please? No. It's like giving a toddler the butt, the big red butt, to see what happens. Oh, guys, it's this is my favorite with all item the tens in the whole on game. It, right? So what you're going to so do tens, right? is, yes, you need two dice yep. usually to roll a d100. One of them is going to look just like this and go one or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. The other, like you said, will have the same thing, but all in the tens places. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Okay. okay, I got a, a, a 60 and um, a 90. So 69. Nice. Mm-hmm. Hold on, was it 60 and 90? Or... I have a 6 and a 90. 6, there we go. Oh. Okay, very different answer. Less nice. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, okay, this is actually amazing. You step through and <laughs> cast this, one of the seven 
spheres on here shatters. And you don't notice an effect. But the five blue scales there, they turn and they look at you as you step out. Where did you find that? That good! Me want that! You give, you share with other blue scales. Am I with you, her? No one else said they stepped through. You can. Oh. Anybody can join me. I am, I am, I'm guessing I look like a blue scale. I'm right now just you standing look down there. At your, speech, you just look speechless. down at the wand really quick and you see your hand. Brilliant blue scales. Vibrant blue scales. Not any ambiguous, a little bit more blue purple. Blue. Okay. I look at them and I go, I found it, it's mine. And I put it back in my pocket. Ah, fine, you're no fun. Here, get, get, get back on my shoulder. Stop moving so much. As they keep trying to build this tower up to this staff. Everyone else, you definitely hear this. You still hear the sound of coins as a shield rides down it for a third time. You hear praying to Tiamat somewhere. You hear other voices that you have no idea what they're doing. But you definitely hear this exchange. Is the portal still there? Oh, yeah. Portal's yeah. there. Then I'll go through. Did you say you yeah. were following through, too? Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll go. follow through, too. As you step through, I'll be like, ah, red scales! Roll initiative, please. Oh my god. As soon as you two step through, I definitely need initiative. So right now, I am seen as their friend, but then they stepped through. So I'm in the, like a weird like limbo place, aren't I, until I decide where to go. You can do at the moment, you know, uh, at the moment, they have no reason to think you aren't a blue scale, just a beautiful one. <laughs> All right, hold up. Let me roll for them. Not great. Um, okay. Uh, I need... Actually, everyone, go ahead and roll me initiative. If you haven't already, I'll need it from everyone, even if you're not in the fight, just to represent the order of operations. 20 and above. Kibbles, what'd we get? 21. 15 to 19. Crunch and Sanders. 18. 18. 15. Got it. And what about Onyx and Daphne? Twelve. Twelve? Eight. Eight. Ooh. Uh, what is your dexterity bonus? So this is what we usually do when there's a tie. So I'm just wondering what the plus is on your dexterity. It's a plus five. Not your saving throw, just your dexterity at the top. Uh, plus three. Plus three. So you will definitely go first. All right. So in that case, uh, all of you go in a row without them, you beat all of their initiatives. Um, so I will actually let you guys go in whatever order you'd like. It's still one round per initiative, but if you want Onyx to go first, Onyx can go first. If you guys want Crunch to go first, Crunch can go first. It's up to you all. Who would like to go first? Rolled highest and I saw your hand first, so we'll go with Kibbles until I hear otherwise. So, Kibbles, you step through. You see... Yes. Um, uh, you definitely recognize Onyx. The clothing is the same. The two wands, you know, the Arcane Gate and the Wand of Wonder are both in her hand. But she is Sapphire. Onyx, are you betraying us now, too? Hey! No. Um, we'll talk later. Can I 
How far away is the closest kobold, and are they in Five a ladder a right feet. now? Uh, are they in a ladder? Two, uh, two of them, three of them are in a ladder. Two are on the ground. We're waiting to climb. Okay. Um, because we're so close, I doubt I'd be able to just quickly hide and then... Hiding yeah, will be tough unless you get behind something. As long as you have cover, you can try to hide. Right out in the open, harder. Me. I want to get behind them. So I am going to get her across the gold, and I want to stab the bottommost kobold in the back. Okay, and here's the thing. Every one of them is surprised because they were absolutely not on alert for this, and you all came through prepped. So while you're not hidden, they are surprised, which means you all get to go through this whole initiative order. They'll get their initiatives on which the turn they don't get to act because they're surprised. So we restart the initiative order again. So you all will get to go and then you'll get to go again before they do. So this one, I am going to subtract his dexterity modifier from his AC because he has three kobolds or two kobolds on his shoulder. So he can't really dodge. So roll me that damage. Oh, I got a 14 to hit. Oh, 14 to hit. That'll hit. I just assumed you would hit. Um, and I wouldn't have sneak attack doing this, would I? Even if... Mm, are they... No, yeah, I don't think so. Because mm. they're surprised. No, you surprise doesn't automatically give you sneak attack. Um, but what I will say is, because we're doing theater of the mind, Onyx is absolutely, I would say, within five feet of the tower cobalts. So you would qualify for sneak attack. Yeah, baby. Where is I need a D4. I'm just using my rusty knife. Okay. Woo! That's nice. Uh that'll be eight points damage. Is that uh in addition to the sneak attack, with the sneak attack total? That's with this the sneak attack would be two D6, right? Uh, I do believe so at your level, yes. Yeah, so that would actually be 11 damage. 11 damage. Wonderful. Um, okay. So I have to, let me do one thing really quick so that I can get the mood right. One second. Ah, ah. Come on. There we go. Need some battle drums. Um... But the you don't quite kill this one, but you just kind of dash by and boom, slice him ah! and goes absolutely tumbling backwards. The other two kobolds on the shoulder, one succeeds, one fails. Uh, one, the top one, fails, falls the full distance, only taking one bludgeoning damage, but both of them are now prone as well. All right, so you stab this one, sneak attack. Anything else? Um, do any of these kobolds look familiar? These kobolds? No. All right, then, uh... I am going to... Can I bonus action sit down on the guy that I stabbed? Like, just sit right on top of him? So that's kind of like a grapple. So I can't have okay. it be done as a bonus action. That would have to be an action to kind of pin him down. Now, right. if you want purely for flavor, with absolute, then 100% use your movement to sit on him. Yeah, I'm just going to sit down on him and cross my legs. Well, they're all yours. And that's my turn. Okay, who would like to go next? I just have a bow, right? Well, you currently I'm have your t- the two wands in your hand. My two wands, um, yes. <laughs> And in terms of your weapons uh, that you have equipped, yes, you have a long bow. You would also, in all likelihood, have a short sword, which just never got added to your inventory. So I'll just do okay. that really quick. So I, I'm just going to take the, the wand again, and I'm going to slowly walk up to them and go, you guys, what the heck is that? And then I'm going to pull the wand and just do it one more time. Oh, my God. Yes, chaos. This is why I gave the kobold so many magic items. Roll me the D100. Are you going to blow me up again? I do need you to uh, choose one of the targets, though. 
It isn't, so you have to have a target just in case it's a targeted effect. So which of the kobolds would you like? There are the three who were in the tower, one of which got badly stabbed, the other two are prone. There are also the two other kobolds who are currently very much wanting to attack your friends with daggers. How far away are the other two kobolds from the three that are already prone? And started? oh, from them, they were all right next to each other. So just about everyone's like five right next feet. to me. Yeah, they're... I'm gonna I'm gonna aim for one that was that's prone, but not the the one that she was hitting before. I love this strategy. Let's go. All right, roll me that d100 again, and let's see what happens. Be a fireball is all I ask. <laughs> okay, I have an eight and a forty. <laughs> um, you target, and there suddenly, as the third of the seven spheres on the wand shatters, from it erupts a cloud of enormous butterflies, each about yay big, like 600 of them that all explode out of here and fly around this pavilion, causing this area to become heavily obscured. You are having a very difficult time seeing through just the mass of 600 two-foot wingspan butterflies. Can I do a bonus action and yell through the portal, just sort of lean back and go, you guys, now! Yes, you may. Um, so what this does, just so you all know, for the mechanics is a heavily obscured area. While you're inside of it, you are treated as blind because you can see so little. So that means anything that requires seeing will either be impossible while inside of here or at disadvantage at minimum. But that includes for the blue scales. All right, that is Onyx's turn. Oh, you still have movement. Did you want to move out of this cloud of butterflies or stay in it? I'm going to move toward where uh, Kibbles was. Got it. So you just kind of feel your way that direction. No problem. That will bring up who would like to go next. Be moi. All right, let's go. Um, Prunch is just gonna walk through the portal and just see a fuck ton of butterflies. That is all you see. Uh, guys, wh where are the other cobalt? Where are the blue scales? You did not tell me where any of them were, so I don't know where. Yeah, you just is. walk out. Uh. <laughs> huge butterflies and for you I mean keep in mind you're like a little around the three and a half foot ish mark is the average kobold like three foot two their wingspan is two feet these are big and there are six hundred of them alright well uh Ain't much I could do. Um, so uh, Crutch is just going to call out to his friends. Where are you? Over here, Crunch. <laughs> See, it's you I'm left like, me. I'm I'm still on the other side of the portal. I yelled. You just hear that from right behind you because the portal is right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> where, where are they? Oh, I don't know. At least sitting on one of them. All right. Doing anything else? <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, you know what? We're going to crunch. Crunch is smarter than me. What people think. Crunch is going to drop his axe on the ground and sweep until he finds a body. Okay. So we're going to have this be investigation check with disadvantage because you're blind. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. Um, okay, so there's one in, okay. Got the DC, I can do he, math. Can he hurt us? Is there friendly fire in this situation? Oh, 100%. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Well, 
Well, I rolled an 11 and an 18. So 11. So the DC yes. I set to find something mm-hmm. was only an eight because the area is quite occupied. You're going to encounter someone. Now, could you roll me a D8? On an eight, re-roll it. Okay, how about D8 is the diamond looking one? Yep. Correct, okay. sir. A two! A two? All right. Roll me to hit. Well, let's, uh, you know, I should have roamed around with the sword out. Uh, it will be with, funny enough, not disadvantage or advantage because the target is prone. Nice. Cool. So, you know what? We're going to save it because you can't see it. So we're not going to rage. Oh, come on. It's what we do when people can't see that matters. You know what? Fuck it. Yes. Let's go. Because you know what? I've been wanting to say this for weeks now. You know what? Crutch would like to rage. All right. Let's get that when, rage. Hmm? Here's the fun part, because I've, I've, I've thought about it. When Crunch rages, none of you will see it, but the camera people see it. <laughs> Just barely his through these huge yeah. butterflies. Yeah. Uh, when Crunch rages, he gets that salivated look, starts to drool, his teeth get bigger, his horns get a little bit bigger, the spines on his back start jutting out just a little bit bigger and he becomes he looks like a monster but he's still cool people so i've never raged before so what do i do so all it is going to do at this point is going to give you plus two to your damage it will also give you damage resistance to your blood to bludgeoning piercing and slashing damage okay the really cool part, kids, is it doesn't say non-magical bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. So magic doesn't, just because it's magical piercing, doesn't get around the barbarian's rage damage reduction. Well, huh? that's a nat 20. Woo! No need to even do anything else. Yep, yeah, that's nat 20. Um, Could I just have you, and I'm sorry that it yeah. is this way, but could I have I you describe how you take out the one that Kibbles is actually sitting on, um, one, without hitting Kibbles, and two, without any of your fellow kobolds getting to see it. But paint me a picture as you do kill this kobold. At this point in time, in rage mode, Crunch is vocabulary is very limited because it sounds like this rip and tear rampage and just cuts his fucking head off fuck yeah and you definitely in the process slice through about six of these butterflies so it was just a (laughs) massacre of wings and scaly head as you behead this and for a brief second because of how intense this is the butterflies (laughs) scatter just long enough kibbles for you to look up and see crunch standing there as you felt and heard the swing and then it closes up again and there crunch oh is he dead he's dead more more xandris or daphne who would like to go next uh I'm more than happy to go, unless you would like to go. Go for it. Okay, Um, how far do I have to walk to get out of this cloud of not seeing shit? Since you can't see, you I don't, don't know. know. Okay, where did I hear that commotion? Uh, a little in front and to the left, but pretty close. Um, okay. Uh, Xandris is going, okay, um, is going to put both hands in the air, draconic scream, 
um, run straight in front of me, and hopefully someone is within 10 feet and is affected by my cry. If not, whatever. If I run into anybody in my what movement, that's are you great. Doing? Um, I am. <laughs> I am going to hold a short, <laughs> holding my short sword up, my hands. Like, okay. And I, if I run in to an enemy, I am going to bring that down on their head. So while I'm draconic screaming with my bonus action. So draconic screaming. It's called draconic cry. Oh, there cry. We go. Oh. So until the start of, I was actually gonna do the same thing on my turn. So oh we'll God. see. Cool. We might be twinsies. Um, I oh would say God. that impacts everyone but Daphne. Wait, what? Daphne's on the still no, on it's the, the other enemies. side. Enemies. It doesn't oh, it matter it that the enemies, enemies within you, ten well, feet. You of and too. your allies have advantage on attack rolls against the enemies that could hear you. I apologize. So you have advantage on all of them. Crunch? So I forgot, cause I took great weapon bastard. I scored a critical, I get a bonus attack, but we can oh, shit. run it back. Well, hold up. We will run it back in a sec to do that bonus yep. attack. Let's just finish resolving this. Um, so Xandrus, you <laughs> using this great use of a racial ability, um, and they don't even make a save. It's nuts. It just happens. It just happens. Mm -hmm. So all of your allies will have advantage against these, which while blinded, cancels out the disadvantage. So they would be straight rolls. Now with that said, we're gonna do a little wibbly wobbly stuff and jump back a second before that has taken effect. Crunch, you do in fact have great weapon master. You did, you did score a crit. So, what do I need to do, boss? Well, I need to roll another are you D8 and... are you trying to find another thing? Are you trying to like keep poking around? A so question: When I slice through and there was enough room, I want to look around. Fair enough. I will say. You notice well enough that <laughs> Kibbles is seated right on top of your now dead blue scale friend, and there is another fighting with some of the large butterflies right next to them. Get off me! Wing the axe, drink the blood, let's go! So this is again a straight roll. 19 plus five plus That'll two. Hit. All right. Well, not uh, um, the plus two is for damage, not to hit. Oh, okay, sorry. You're Nineteen good. plus it still five. Hits. Still hits. All right, and then damage is nine plus three is twelve. Wait, yeah, twelve plus two, fifteen. Fourteen. <laughs> okay. Could you describe this one too? Cool. Is he is he doing this right now? Oh yeah, just like fighting off cool. these enormous butterflies that take up two thirds of his body. The, the more Crunch gets, the more Crunch wants, and he's just salivating and whatnot. The blood is still on him. Takes the act, takes baby, and while he's doing this, with his arms in the air, just cleaving in half. So he falls like this. <laughs> yeah, just because he was prone, the way you cleave is you just cleave his arms off as he was fighting against them. So he screams for a moment, then goes into shock and dies as a result. Uh, wonderful. <laughs> Jumping back to Xandrus, who just ran in with their battle cry. You still have your action, are you? and you're trying to find a target? Could you do the same thing I had crunched to? Could you first make me an investigation check with disadvantage? But the DC is low. getting higher because people are dying. <laughs> fewer yes, okay. Now could you roll me a D6? Four. 
Okay. Roll to hit. Sorry, I didn't use my weapon a lot. I'm more like a spellcaster, so just give me a second. Um, that was the unnatural one. <laughs> so you, could you describe the natural one for me? I love describing nat 20s, but I also love knowing how we fail so badly. So I was screaming right, and I can't see anything. I'm a little overstimulated, and my socks are itchy, and I'm a little upset, right? So I've got my sword above my head, and I'm running in, and I'm screaming, um, and I'm gripping the sword with two hands, and I'm just swinging it down like this. Um, but I'm not bringing it down far enough to reach any kobold height. I just so you're just like down. stabbing over not your far. head. Yeah, I'm doing this. And you- I don't bring it down all the way. Crunch, you feel a of a blade next to your head. And as the butterflies get go away for just a moment in response, you see Xandris behind you as you almost stab Crunch. What you see is Crunch just <sighs> and then becomes obscured again by the butterflies. Fire burning, fire burning, fire. Daphne, last but not least. Okay, so I'm gonna come through the portal and then what I'd like to do is just, I know it's like super, super obscured by butterflies. I want to try if possible to like look to see if I can see uh, if I can see like movement, do I know the general direction people have gone? I mean, you know that the portal was set up facing inwards towards the pavilion. So okay. you suspect they would move forward, but in terms of seeing, uh -uh. nothing. All right, so I'm gonna kind of tap myself and cast uh, Armor of Agathis Ooh, great on spell. myself. And then I'm just going to walk straight towards where I think they're going to be. So hopefully they hit me and take cold damage. Totally and so fair. I'm just going to try to put myself where I think people are. So as where they're going to be hitting as things. you become enshrouded in this spectral frost that covers you, you step forward and just await the enemy's will. And yes. that brings us to their initiative. And they don't get to do anything. So that brings us I'm to the top of the initiative. <laughs> just look oh, around like what? The way it should be. So first um, up was Kibbles. And Kibbles, you are first up again. I'm I'm going to reach to where the head used to be on this fellow. Notice it is gone. Um, so I saw when the ladder crashed down, right? Oh yeah, yeah, that happened before. Oh, um, yeah. So I'm going to walk towards where the two other kobolds would have landed. Okay. Um, and as soon as I find one that moves, when I walk like into it, I'm going to just stab down. <laughs> Same thing, investigation. Whatever. I'm going to say not with disadvantage because you saw okay. where they were, but you are still blinded. So that takes it from advantage to neutral. Okay, where's my So step? investigation check. Perfect. Also because you have to determine if they're alive or dead. That is fair enough. Investigation. Uh, that's a 15. 15? Okay. Could you just, actually, I'm just going to do this. Evens. It's the living one. Odds, it's not. A two. All right, so it's alive. It is one that as you are poking, kicking, prodding forward, get the fuck off of me! Stab, stab, uh, stab. Since he's prone, prone, it would be technically Pro? Advantage, but since I've got disadvantage. Yeah, and up. so the way that 5th edition works, annoyingly, is if there is any disadvantage, 
it cancels out all advantage. And if there is any advantage, it cancels out all disadvantage, no matter how many sources there are. So it's just a straight roll. I think it should be differently, but that's a whole different can of worms. Okay. Uh, that is only an eight. An eight? You absolutely stab down, but you feel as your hand gets grabbed and your dagger stopped just inches away. Now that said, you're a rogue. If you had a second weapon, bonus action. Which I did action. grab two daggers, so bonus, I'm just gonna like bonus action stab. stab. With the other one? Yeah, you can still stab. Stab, stab, stab. stab. I will also, I was going to give Not you, I was going to no. say that because of the fact that you are locked in together, the blindness no longer matters, so the prone takes effect, so you have advantage. So you can roll to see if you crit. Nope. All but right, but you do hit. Yes. And that one is just a straight D4. Yes, straight D4. I wouldn't, I wouldn't get sneak attack. Correct. I no, mean, it might be sneak. a queer D4. You don't know. I'm not here to make those assumptions. That's only a two. You know how many hit points he had left after your sneak attack? Two. So, as you're locked in here, you manage to take your second one and just kind of lean your weight as the dagger slowly approaches. <laughs> Fucking butterflies! <laughs> now, nobody can see it. Nope. But when kibbles kill something, there is a look of almost too much excitement because she spent her whole life killing like rats and everything. So it's just like a look of pure satisfaction. She just pulls the dagger out. And then uh, that is going to be my turn. Okay. Then that will bring up Onyx. So how long are these butterflies in this area? Are they dispersing at all? Or are we Not just yet. like in a cavern of blind? Not a full stuff? cavern, um, but a, a <laughs> small, a small section. <laughs> um, actually, could you roll me a d10 really quick, Onyx? I forgot to have you roll this. This is for how long they last. Oh, it's a, it's a critical one. That's a good nice. thing. That means it only lasts oh, one minute instead of up to 10 minutes. Oh, look at that. It was a one. All right. So they are still here, but you are up. Okay, so they're still here. We still can't see anybody. And I don't know where anybody is. You hear stuff around you, but you can't see people. Okay, so can I start movement in the direction of this maniacal, maniacal laughing from Crunch and now Kibbles who have just murdered someone? Yes. Could you please roll me a investigation check with disadvantage, please? It's, I believe it's a, is the, there's no dot, it's a six. If there's no, are you sure there's no dot? There's no there should dot. always be a dot or a line to let you know whether it's a six or a nine. I feel like the, the nine has a dot on it, but the six does not. For what so it's I'm worth, I'm going to say it's a six. When in doubt, little dice hack, though it's cumbersome, you can always look on the opposite side of it because it'll always total up to 21. Oh, so. that's true. So it's, I, I got a six there. What do I add to it? A uh, six plus your investigation. I will say oh, okay. investigation so four, or so perception. Hey, that's exactly what I was wanting. So, you could you roll me one, two, a d6, please? D6. I'm letting you know the number you really want is low. D6 is just your standard looking cube. Six is a Monopoly dice. Yeah. Four. Four. <laughs> okay. You, nice. You bump into someone who is standing up about cobalt height. Can I tell if it's red or blue? You can't. You are blind. 
You cannot see. You can try to say something. I'm just going to reach out and go, who's there? Are you okay? Xandris, you feel a hand on you. Uh, I will scream in a very high-pitched manner. Xandris! Uh, Xandris! Did, did you just actually scream? Yeah. It didn't come through on Discord. I yeah, heard it. Yeah, I didn't press it. I heard it from two flights up. It didn't seem like the right thing to do on Discord. I mean, that's why I have a no a limiter on the speakers. <laughs> um, well, uh, it sounded like this. Just kidding, just kidding. Um, uh, okay. But then you say Sandra, and I go, ah, yeah. Now, Ethan, am I still blue? <laughs> yes. That's gonna last a while. <laughs> I pretty much, I pretty much look at her and go, don't freak out, I'm blue, the wand did it. I don't know what happened. <laughs> What the fuck? All right, so as of this turn, you don't find any enemies. All right, then that will move us to Crunch. Oh, that's bad. Um, Crunch doesn't know you're blue. So, <laughs> I mean, um, I will say to be fair, to be fair. Now you can decide whether or not Crunch, in his rage, processes this. But Xandris was right behind you. So therefore, Onyx is only right behind, is only about seven feet behind you. So it's okay. possible, if you wish, that Crunch would have heard that. Cool, Crunch would have heard that. Crunch, Crunch would have known you smell different, so it's fine. He's been around you long enough. He knows what you smell like. Um. Crunch is also going to, once again, start doing a sweep to find bodies of going away from the people that is behind him. He is only going to move forward and keep going. Make me a either investigation or perception check. Okay. First. You said perception and investigation. Yep, whichever. Nat 20. There we go. Um, with a nat 20, we're not even gonna roll the odds to see whether it's friend or foe because you said you were moving away. With all of that plus a nat 20, yeah, you bump into a kobold. Cool, we're swinging. Okay, uh, it will be a flat roll. Still blind, but you have advantage from Xandris. Found you. Nat 20. Really? Two yes. in a row? Jesus. Yes. All right, one in 400 chance, let's go. All right. Okay. Um, for what it's worth, knowing what you are using and with crunchy crit supplied, you can roll. Okay. There isn't a point, but if you're just curious how much damage you do, you can. Okay. Just as an um, academic it practice, or you could just describe it to me. It's when I say found you, grab him, grab the kobold, drop the axe on the ground, pick him up and throw him on the axe. Oh, sick. All right, so just, <laughs> just use, this is so fucked up in so many ways. And I'm glad that we can see it, even if the play, the other kobolds can't. It is horrifying. And one luck point for that. <laughs> All right, that will then. Find me another uh, one. Yeah, nope. you you did Find do that. One. You only moved fifteen feet, so you still have about half your movement left. With a nat twenty, you know what? Yeah, you bump into another. Let's just go. I, you know what? Actually, I'll make it even better. Break him. I throw the other piece. I hear the other dude. I go for it. So That's, yeah, just like picking up the axe, dragging it behind you towards where you heard this. So just again, flat roll. Eleven plus five, fourteen. That uh, sixteen. You'll hit. Sixteen. Yeah. Okay. And come on, not enough to kill it in one hit. Can't have double okay. fatality oh. two rounds. No, no, round. you're good. You're good. I rolled a four plus three plus two, so nine. Nine. Um, 
You definitely heard it as you just dragging the axe behind you, classic anime style, and just give a big swing, and it digs right into the ribs of this kobold. Ah! Fucking red scales! Silly blue scale. Got you. All right, Sandra's cheese is murdering. Can I see anybody? Nope. To attack? Nope. Is it still dark? Is you're blind Slash because blinded. of butterflies. <clears throat> okay, you I'm going butterflies in the sky. I was... yeah, so many opportunities <laughs> here for you. So many. Um, and uh, so Zandris is going to attempt to kind of move out of the like gently pushing aside the the butterflies and you know her mind or whatever. Uh, Lucy in the sky with butterflies. Lucy in the sky with, and then uh, she's just gonna use all of her movement to try to walk out so she can see something. You just walk forward from Got the it. direction that you went. Yes, and at with about five feet of movement left to spare. Yep, you reach the edge of this cloud. Yeah of butterflies and you look back and just see this 30 foot sphere that is entirely obscuring the uh, gazebo, the uh, pavilion here. You can't see it anymore at all. However, what you do see is a handful or is two kobolds on top of a nearby, just a little to the north, pile of coins. Two, you said. Who are pointing to the cloud of butterflies. Mm. And one is pointing, the other is in the process, is holding a flask of some sort, large, like about yay big uh, flask, and is currently trying to uncork it. Okay. So, um, how far away is that? Within 120 feet, you'd say? Yeah, I would certainly say. Uh, Xander's uh, eyes are gonna light up. She's going to uh, lick her little dragon lips and she is going to go, uh, friend. And she puts a, a, like motions to put a crown down in front of her and is gonna cast crown of madness on the one who is opening the Oh, Wisdom saving throw, please. Okay. This is a big roll here, guys. They have a minus Get two. It, What's the DC I'm Come looking on. for? 13. I rolled a 16 on the die, which is 14 uh, total. Can I give any luck points? Can I do the luck points? To, oh, yeah, yeah, can I give? Three luck points reduce my roll by one. I'll give two to give her one. I've got all three. So three oh, takes it down to a 13, which is still a pass, me to beat. Okay. I and can then... give. Okay. Oh wait, Onyx is giving two already, so I'll, I'll give, give the two. last one. Okay. Got it. Cool, thank you. So I would love so, to know, okay. Xandris, could you describe how this kobold was in the process of fighting off this effect, but you managed to activate it and get him to fall under your control, how? So he, um, so as he's he's pulling this thing, his mind is distracted. Mm -hmm. And um, it's in that moment that Xandris, um, she gets this giggle as she puts this imaginary crown down on this imaginary kobold in front of her. And he just hears <laughs> this, and he um, he immediately drops the thing as this jagged crown of thorns appears on his head. His eyes flash red, and he immediately goes to choke out his friend. This crown, this thorny-looking crown, which is made of pure obsidian, it looks like, lowers onto the blue scale's head and digs inside its skull. 
and as it latches inside its mind, you will be able to tell it who to attack on its turn. That's delightful. That's fun. That's that's really lovely. Thank you so much. Um, let me see if I have a bonus action. Do you? Sorry, I'm checking. It's in the reduced looking, and I and I fucking can't stand it. Um, and then, yeah, that's it because I can't see anybody else. Okay, cool. That's it. Okay, that brings up Daphne. Okay, so I've been standing kind of in the midst of these butterflies, hoping somebody would knock into me, and it's not working. They haven't and gotten so a turn I'm, yet. <laughs> they're just incompetent. Can't even try to hit me. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to um. I, I was trying to stand like kind of in the middle of everybody. And so if possible, I'd like to um, like kind of wave my arm around and see if I can make contact with somebody using my movement just to kind of like circle. So around. I will give you advantage on this because you just heard Crunch yelling mm. over to your right and you heard a scream. So yes. you head that general direction. So I will say actually even because of that, without a check. Um, can I get to the general? Yes, you absolutely can. And because of Xandrus's advantage, it cancels out the blindness disadvantage. So if you were to make an attack, you could do so as a straight roll. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to get close enough that I can get to the target mm -hmm. and I'm going to cast Eldridge, uh, Eldridge Blast and try to- A hundred percent. So try to hit you don't, it. the thing is it's ranged. You don't even have to get close. You just have to know where you're firing. The general direction. Yeah. I'm going to try to hit it. Okay. Throw it. Um, again, because of Xandrus's Draconic Cry. Straight roll. This is, yep, just a straight roll. Okay, 15 plus six for hit. 21. So. Uh, roll me that damage. Okay, it's a d10 plus four. Okay, so it- So six. Matter. Um, it had three hit points left, it's which is below the gone. minimum. So what does your Eldritch Blast look like? I don't know if we've so ever what I do it is I, I kind of like bring my hand out and I picture it that, uh, cause our dragon queen, she's a blue dragon, is that right? Um, mm, mm, Do it, we know? Well, you certainly know. Uh, I she, would. She is a black dragon. A black dragon? Mm -hmm. I picture that like when I pull the Eldritch Blast, there's just this kind of like, it's starting in my, the beam sort of starts in my hand, almost like a black swirl before the, like the energy kind of crackles and like shoots towards a target. I imagine since she's like gotten these powers from the Dragon Queen, you can sort of see hints of kind of that same energy. I love it. In the Elder Spice. And we watch in this bullet time moment as Daphne threads the Eldritch Blast between the butterflies as they just part as this blast fires through and opens up just in time to detonate and just explode this remaining kobold who was still partially attached to your axe, Crunch and then just Okay. I did, did that work? Yeah. Uh, that's that's my turn. All right. That brings up no one in the pavilion because they all five are dead. So that now brings up the two who are on the gold hill that Xandris noticed. The first one goes to pick up as the one that, actually they go, yeah. Uh, who, I assume you were telling the one that you have under control to attack its friend. Okay, it has to use its action before movement to do that. So why don't you go ahead and roll me a d20, Lauren. Xandris, since you are controlling this kobold's attack, you might as well roll the d20. Uh, 16. With an unnatural 20, you absolutely hit. Uh, D4, please, plus two. Six. Max damage. All right, um, just stabs in. Ah, what the fuck? 
and goes to the little one, or the one that isn't under the effect, picks up the giant flask and is just hugging it and walking backwards on the pile of gold. <laughs> Zenus! We were friends! Why you attack? We share! And that's how he's going to use his turn. <laughs> oh, oh, no! That brings up everyone inside of the pavilion. Right now, while we're still in active initiative order because there is still a target outside of there, in here, we don't have to go in a particular order. What are you all wanting to do? Did we hear the little kobold yelling at his friend? I mean, over the sounds of... Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can hear a little shouting out that direction. Can I just use all my movement and bonus action dash if I need to, to go towards that? Don't need noise. the bonus action dash. With your full movement, you manage to get out of the sphere. Cool. Um, I'm going to pull my crossbow out and shoot the guy with the flask. Okay, roll to hit. He is 120 feet, uh, or not 120 feet. That was the range of the spell. Excuse me. 5, 10, 15. Uh, 65 feet away, just so you know, in case that impacts your range. Yeah, let me see. Your crossbow Hi. has a range of uh, 30 to 120, so this will be with disadvantage because it's in your long oh, range. Okay. Because it's just a hand <coughs> crossbow. Uh, that is still 18. That will still hit. Roll me damage. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, forgot to make the wisdom saving throw. Fail. Sorry, two seconds. I didn't actually ever add it to my equipment, so I'm just quickly looking up the stats. No, I see it right here. Uh, your hand oh. crossbow? I got it right here. Um, it is one d six plus three damage. Wonderful, thank you. Got gotcha. you. That is five points of damage. Right. So as this little kobold is stepping back, holding this flask and pleading with his friend, a crossbow bolt just hits him right in the back of the head <laughs> and falls onto the flask. Nice. All right, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to follow Zandris, like in the direction that she went yep. since I was right next to her and she walked out. I'm going to follow her out. And then I'm going to look over and see and not realize that she has control over this cobalt. And I'm going to pull out my bow and arrow and I'm going to shoot at the other cobalt that she has control over. 100%. Go ahead and roll to hit. It has glowing eyes, by the way. I'm trying to figure out which one I do. It, it's the eight one. Okay, got it. For the purposes of this, both because of the fact that it is charmed and for the ease of the narrative with a time restraint, how do you shoot and kill this kobold? Well, I look over at Xandris and I'm like, hey, and then I look in the direction she's looking. I'm like, oh my god. I pull out my bow and arrow and I pull back really hard and I focus on its head and I shoot straight and it just cuts him right in the back of the neck. Because he was absolutely, you know, not on alert and was focused on the other kobold, it's an easy shot, pot shot. And you just land it down and rolls a few times on the hill of gold coins and then just slides to a stop. Nice. And we are, for now, out of initiative order. Are the butterflies still around us? Just for another 40 or so seconds, and you just watch, and eventually they just all melt. Can I go towards the kobold with the giant flask? Well, the, oh, yeah, you want to climb up there? Yeah, I want to climb up there and get the flask. Absolutely. As you start to climb up there, I will say you do also notice between two piles of gold, a little off to the left, a solitary kobold who seems to be quite attently studying 
a small ornate dagger. Ooh. Is- Am I able to sneak up on him? You can certainly try. And he's blue, right? Correct. I need to get my skills. With a nine, or 18. 18. Oh. Yes. You move up quite stealthily. Uh, and as seeing you're, the dagger. As you're approaching, you start to hear. You can see a little bit more, and you can hear a little bit more. You see that there is a single brightly glowing emerald embedded into the hilt of this dagger that this kobold is investigating. This blade, he whispers, it holds the power to give me what I want. I wish... I wish I was a real dragon! (gasps) Wings erupt from the back of this kobold as he goes on to all fours and begins to shift in front of you. Its scales still, uh, its scales shift bluer as it grows. Wings, leathery wings, a huge long tail. And where moments ago in front of you, there was a blue scale kobold, there is now a young blue dragon. Because Am I still <laughs> Do you want to? The answer is yes, if you want to. In fact, during the transformation, I'll give you advantage. Um, can I try to stab him in the back while he's mid-transition? Because I had originally planned to sneak up behind him and sh- can, stab him. You can certainly try. Roll me to hit. Okay. Would I have advantage? You are unseen. I'll give you advantage. That is a 23. That will definitely hit. Okay. So I'd have sneak attack, right? Yep. Yes, baby, come on. Oh, that was so bad. Okay, Uh, that wasn't too bad. Uh, Nine points of damage. Nine points. You stab in mid-transition, and this, at that point, part kobold, part dragon, rears you back. Do you try to keep your knife in and hold on, or do you retreat? Hold on. Okay, you stay on here as the transformation continues, and you find yourself soon partially on the back of this dragon that then... and lifts up and begins to fly around the room. All of you who have who were around the pavilion look up and see, not as big as your queen, not by any extent of the imagination, but you see still a large dragon flying around and you can't help but see trailing, holding on to a dagger that is embedded in the side. Kibbles. <laughs> Oh my god, you guys. Look what she got herself into. Like, how did she even fucking... uh, She was really there right here and I fuck... I don't... Who is in charge of Kibbles? (laughs) Big dragon. Crunch focus. Uh, Oh. Kibbles. What goes must come down. What are you doing? Um... I am going to take my other dagger and I'm going to stab it higher up. I'm going to try to make my way higher up onto the dragon. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Since it was so quick uh, between combats, I'm just going to keep the initiative order of what we uh, previously had going. And I'm just going to roll fresh for the... Uh, dragon. Young blue <laughs> no, just a dragon. dragon. It's not a big deal. You guys, I just want to take this opportunity to remind you, have a lot of magic items. Yeah. I just want to remind you of those because right about now, right about now, that's about what they were made for. 
You guys have way less magic yeah. items than you have. I'm using mine all the time, and that's getting us butterflies. <laughs> Look, it's uh, random. It's on random. I, 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 I could cast fire, fi fireball, but I'm not sure that helps when Kibbles <laughs> is on the dragon. Um, Ethan, do I see the magical dagger he was nope. holding? Did I see what became of it? Uh, usually, or it. You have a good passive perception. Fell to the ground when it the okay. creature shifted. Is it? So, oh, we wouldn't have seen it. Never mind. Sorry. Having saw that, can I actually, instead of using my dagger, pull out my my wand of disenchantment or like the uh, the spell magic, the spell magic mm -hmm. wand? And can I attempt to use that on the dragon? You channel the force of this wand to try to dispel any magic, but the thing is, this was a wish. Shit. This isn't okay. polymorph. Like this is now a dragon. I thought it might be. Okay, then that is uh, what I will do with my turn. All right. As you <laughs> stop being a dragon, um, Onyx. How far am I away from the dagger that he was holding? For what it's worth, you didn't see the dagger. Oh, you just saw yeah. the dragon suddenly okay. appear. Okay. So we're in this situation where we're trying to get her down while at the same time fighting him. He's not perching anywhere, right? Nope, not, yeah, not yet. Flying quite angrily. And yet still probably quite elatedly. It was the location of where they were with the dagger a higher location than we are at? No, like, about the same elevation. Uh, as far as you can tell, you saw as it took off from behind a uh, pile of gold right next to where you are. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna re reach for my bow and arrow and I'm gonna try and shoot the dragon. Um, I, I may have to walk out further for it to get a better vantage because I'm underneath the pavilion at the moment, I believe. Yeah, absolutely. You step out and go ahead and let me uh, check the range really quick on your bow. You're fine. You have oh. arrows. So, what was that? <gasps> oh, 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 oh my gosh. You have arrows oh my dragon gosh. slaying. Can, can we? You can have I pull them. out one of the arrows for dragon slaying and do it? I have one because I gave one to <gasps> the shrine. You're right, to the, but you have one. I do have one. Can I do that, Ethan? Absolutely. Is it possible? No, yeah, yeah. it's not a reaction. You have to do that yeah. on your turn, Lauren. I was, I okay. figured, I okay. figured. Okay. Okay. okay, so I got a 11. Total to hit? It, it was damage is 1d8 plus three. Well, oh, hold no, on, I you need it. to roll to hit first. Oh, okay, so, so I rolled a 20. Oh, a 20 to hit? You hit. No. No, 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 no. She's rolling the d20. Oh, yes. I, I roll rolling. a d20 a first. I apologize. No, no you're yes. totally good. 19. 19. All right, bet. You do hit. Okay. So here is what needs to happen first. Good memory on the dry arrow. It's almost like the magic yeah, right? items that you Huge. all got were very much tuned to things it's that might so happen. It's so crazy. Crazy. So it needs to make a constitution saving throw here against this, okay? The DC here is 17. Luckily, because it is a young blue dragon, it doesn't have legendary resistances. It has a plus eight to its constitution save, which means if it gets a nine or above on this, it passes. Okay. Three on the die. <laughs> which means this dragon or this arrow, in addition to the standard damage, will do an additional 6d10 damage. 6d10? Yes. <laughs> okay. I look, I look, after I shoot it off and it hits, I look up and I go, Kibbles, get your ass down here. Oh, oh I yeah. Have, I have a plan, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Onyx, let's roll that damage. So okay, what you're going to roll me is a D8 okay. and then a D10 mm -hmm. six times. Okay. Oh, my gosh. 
huge. Huge. Absolutely huge. It was a three and then a five and a three. I don't know what that means. So it was three, then five, three so that's eight. Three. Then three, so that's eleven, and yeah, the f- the first one, the 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 eight was a three, and then the two, the other two were a five and a three. Okay, I need you to roll me. So, time out. I'm sorry. We're, no, you're totally good. Were two of those the ten sided die? Yes. Okay. The five and the three. <laughs> so you need to roll that four more times, though. Oh, okay. Oh my God. So roll that d10 four more times. So we're at eleven right now. Five. Sixteen. Six. Twenty-two. Six. Twenty-eight. And a nine. Thirty-seven. Thank God you're here to add that. Total damage. Anyone in the chat, feel free to call me out if I added that wrong. I got a lot on my plate. Um, but <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> so you, you send this shot up, and it hits where the armor should be pretty thick, but it just... <clears throat> sinks straight in and you can't even see the arrow, even though it's this long, nasty looking barbed arrow. It sinks so deep through the armor like it was butter. And there's this loud cry of pain as it impacts into the dragon. It's not coming down yet, not by any measure, but that was a good chunk of damage right there on one arrow shot. Why did I give away that effort? Well, who'd you give it to? You might be able to get it back. Uh, back to the shrine. I think to oh, T-Mat. Well, or, she blessed you. Look, T-Mat blessed you with that. Your donation has been noted. Um, Crunch, you are up. Can't fucking fight in the air. <laughs> in fact, you're no longer raging. Oh, cool. How dark is it in this bitch? In here? Uh, there is, it's low light because of the, uh, glowing veins in the rocks. Cool. Well, I'm going to use this lovely, wonderful cape that I got because I can fly in the dim darkness. So put baby on back and just fucking fly off towards the drag. You grab the edges of the cloak and take off. Uh, you go up into the air with this and you get about 40 feet away from it. Unless you use your action to dash. In which You're going to use our action to dash. So you- Because I want to get on it back. You manage to pull right up alongside of it. <laughs> Grabbing and put it, getting on the, getting on the dragon. Okay, so here's what I need. Either a athletics Talk. check or a- Acrobatics check. No oh, athletics check, baby. Kind of figured, but to be able to land and grab hold. Correct. Come on, one. It would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a 15. Okay. So, uh, five. So, oh, shoot. So, yeah, you manage to <laughs> drop straight <laughs> down and sink your little claws between the scales, getting a little bit of a grip. But that is your turn unless you have, down here. Unless you have bonus action. <laughs> I do have a bonus action. Raging? Yeah. Yeah, I kind of <laughs> thought so. <laughs> yeah. Let's go rage, and we go, let's go be there until uh, till it's time. All right. That then brings up Xandris. You have seen this all uh, go down, Xandris. It's it's a lot to unpack. It's a lot. Um, but we don't get anywhere by thinking. We just do it and not think about it. So um, policy, I can kids. see. <laughs> so I can <laughs> see. Well, it's the Kobot policy. Right. Um. So um, Kibbles is hanging from this dragon, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, is it within sixty feet by chance? Eighty feet. Damn it! You could. Move I was going to use my feet. ring of tell. Yeah, I'll, I'll move twenty feet. Um. And then I'm going to take two fingers and gently stroke um, the ring around one of my fingers, and it's the ring of telekinesis, and I am going to attempt to basket catch um, kibbles and get to safety in some way. Am I able to move away from it? 
You can, uh, so the way it works is you need to make a contest. If Xandris is forcibly trying to move you, um, could... Actually, I think I would probably try to move the knife instead. So just trying to remove the knife? Yeah. Oh, sa okay, same thing for all intents and purposes okay. here. Okay. Um, Kibbles, could you please make me a uh, strength check? And Xandris, I need you to make me a uh, charisma check because that's your casting modifier. Okay, I might not be able to do this, but if I notice the dagger moving, am I able to possibly try to maneuver my way solidly onto the dragon if you're going and drop the dagger. So if you're going to do that, here's what I'm going to let you do. Okay. You, instead of making this check, can abandon the knife and make a dexterity saving throw to try to find or, you know, stay on. But here's the price. Yeah. In exchange, if you fail, you fall. Me, whereas if you fail the check against Xandris, you simply get carried away. Your choice. So it's either a strength saving throw it's or a either, dexterity save. It, it's either a strength check or a dexterity save. Tell me what you're doing before you roll, please. Well, I'm going to do the dexterity. All right, let's I'm go. Going to end in the middle. That is a 13. 13. Want to do anything before I say whether or not that succeeds or fails? Um, where is the staff in relation to where I am? The staff, the pavilion? The one that was on top of the pavilion. So it, uh, the one that is inside the pavilion, um, compared to where you are, I need to do that actually. Um, you are. It's like, wasn't it really high up on the pavilion? So it's about 15 it? feet up in the pavilion. Okay. But it's inside so the pavilion. You are about 70 or so feet total in the air right now. Okay. So it's still a little uh, distance from you. I would say it's about from where it flew because it arced around that way. Um, you're nearby it, but like I said, about 60 feet in the air. Okay. That kind of would change what I would do. Um, okay. I, if... Because, like, I, I wasn't sure if the pavilion was higher up or not. I thought the staff was just, like, out of reach, and that's why people couldn't get it. Um, I guess if that's the case, I will allow Xandris to move me instead of trying to resist it. Okay. Because I was going to try to leap off the dragon and land on the staff, but that's going to kill me. So, so normally, I, <laughs> normally, I wouldn't allow changing of the plan once the result of the die has already been Which seen. I don't mind but, this. but this is rule or this is a one shot and we're here having fun. So if you want okay. to allow Xandris to move you, you can. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with the rules. I will feel bad otherwise, so we're gonna stick with the rules. Okay. I'll stick with my 13 <laughs> check to go with the knife starts to move of its own accord and become unlatched from the dragon. You jump over, trying to grab right next to where Crunch has landed. You slide for a second, but you do manage to catch yourself as the DC was 13. All right. Great. Awesome. But you are still, like you're not in a good convenient location. Wait, wait. Yes, very much so. I love it. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so Xandris, you used your ring of telekinesis and <clears throat> the dagger is to your hand. But there is no uh, kibbles attached to it. Well, I, was, I actually just wanted the, the that part, but okay, I guess it's a projectile next turn. The dragon begins to arc around the two of you on top of it are either coming apart from the dragon for a second as you're holding on getting slammed back in or crunch managing to hold on and the dragon comes over opens its mouth and there is a crackling 
of energy as it gouts a lightning strike along the floor of this cavern, sending coins and chests erupting and flying. Could I please have Onyx, Xandrus, and Daphne make me dexterity saving throws? So. 23. You know what? That is way too many dice. I'm going to have a computer do it. Oh, that's never a good sign. Oh, dear. Ah, great. All right, Onyx, what'd you get? 15. 15? Okay. Daphne, I saw a four. Mm hmm. Yeah, four. Mm hmm. Okay. I wasted my good roll earlier. I don't remember what I was doing with it, okay. but. Getting the password, um, I think, maybe. Oh, Eldritch Blast, yeah, that, that was good too. I'm sorry to say that full damage right now is 60. Okay. Um, so that means those of you that pass take 30. Those of you who succeed, or those of you who fail take 60. As okay. <laughs> This huge arc of lightning just sends coins flying, impacts into each one of you, even those of you who managed to dodge it, still feeling enormous amounts of pain. What the good news is, is that Daphne, though this takes you to unconsciousness, mm -hmm. it is eight damage away. From I do have 10 temporary hit points. Oh, even better. You have 10 temp HP, so it was significantly away from 16. doubling, from doubling, taking okay, you to it negative close. your total, so it doesn't yeah. mm -hmm. instant kill you. That's true. You Can I, as I go unconscious, just like take a moment to thank our queen for allowing me to like serve her and like try my best to save her from these blue skins that are actually now dragons, which Absolutely. is wild. I didn't know that they could do that. You have just like take a moment of peace. You have like, this I... moment where you simply thank the queen for allowing you to serve her. Mm. And then the pain hits. That is the end of its turn as it wheels. It is now it came down fairly low to do this. So it's only about 30 feet above ground. To did anyone else go unconscious? Is it to the pavilion now? Onyx did not. Uh, Onyx has four left, and you yeah. have two left. I do. Yeah, um, Ethan, how close is it to the pavilion at this point? It crosses about uh, fifteen feet above it. Perfect. Okay. That is the end of its turn. That brings up Daphne. Daphne, could you please roll me a death saving throw? Yes. 19. Oh, one away from immediately getting back up. Um, but an easy success. Um, so a first successful death saving throw. Okay. While this is happening, uh, just so you know, in my interpretation of unconscious, you're still able to speak a little bit. It's just while you're dying. Is there anything you would like to say right now? I think, I think I would think back to the feeling I had of people watching me. Like that, when I was in the temple, I like felt like I was being watched and I would kind of like want to reflect and think on that and maybe talk to my peers around me being like, maybe, maybe we should, maybe we should just do our best. I don't know. So as you are laying there, do your best in such an anime line while dying. Feel like that is something straight out of My Hero Academia. Um, that'll be your goal that brings us to Kibbles. Okay. I am going to pull out the oh, pretty oh, oh. picture. Time out, I Daphne. had a quick thought. I do have four of my, well, because we, we had two and two, so I used one. Could I use like one of my points to put it to 20? Unfortunately, that's one of the limitations. It has to be a natural. Is you can't okay. make a non-critical a critical. It would be. Yeah, a, I was just curious. It would be a twenty, and there therefore still a success. So you could totally use a lot. Yeah, to but it's take, already a success. Yeah, uh, it doesn't make it a crit. I'm sorry. 
I'm just curious. <laughs> that was a great thought. Uh, so Kibble, as you were saying? I'm going to pull out the pretty picture, the okay. scroll of time saw, and I am going to use it. Okay. One second. I'm going to look down at where Daphne is currently bleeding out on the floor. <sighs> Vanity is not worth this. And I'm going to cast the spell. Okay. Could you do me a favor? Could you yes. make me a... Either an Arcana check or... Yeah, yeah, yeah Arcana oh. check. Because since this is... A spell that is very unfamiliar to you, you have to make a check to use the scroll. It's not instant. It's not guaranteed. This is huge, You got it, baby. You got it, you got it, got it. The DC you're looking for here, just so you know, because Time Stop is a level nine, a level nine spell. The DC is 10 plus the spell's level. Fuck, okay. This is something you, you can pour luck, luck points into for what it is worth. I have two left, I think. It's my first natural 20 of the game! Oh my god! No way! Holy shit! Oh, no way! Shit. So that is a 22 total. Oh. oh my god. I'm writing down the time step so that I do this. That is friggin' <laughs> huge. Okay. So you pull out the pretty picture and something takes over you for a second while you are casting it. You have no familiarity with these sigils, with this language, with these this arcane process, and yet you utter the words of this spell perfectly. And as you do, everything pauses. The wings of the dragon stop moving. The air pushing against you as you hang on for dear life stills. There is no sound. But you still move freely. Could you do me a favor and roll me a d4 here? Because this is how many turns in a row you get to take before time resumes. It's D4 plus one, right? Yeah. Kids, this is why ninth level spells are Three awesome. turns. Three full Three turns. turns. All right. Turn number one. I am going to move to the closest part to the pavilion. The, and I'm going the tail of the dragon. Just in this moment, almost like a slide down to just about three feet over the pavilion. I will slide down that tail and land near that uh, that staff. Okay. So you slide down onto the top of the pavilion and you scamper and you look under and you see it there floating. But in order to get to, to it, you would have to jump. I will jump. Okay. I will say that because all you've done is movement, this is still part of your first turn. This is an athletics check. This is not easy to jump from uh, on top of could the- Could it be acrobatics or I'll allow just that. A... Yeah. All right. I have advantage on it. acrobatics. That is 18 plus five. The DC I set for this was 17. So you are jumping to try to grab the staff, yes? Yeah. Okay. You do. You manage to grab it. Oh, I hope this is worth it. <laughs> and as you do so, the... Hold on one second, let me pull it up. Um, the staff comes down with you. The aura dissipates slightly, but you feel like that's only because it has become concentrated inside the staff. That is turn one, unless you have a bonus action you want to use. And if not, um, what is turn two? I will use my bonus action to try to 
Like, so the, it's a closed area I'm no, in right now? No, no, it's a pavilion. So just think about it as six pillars supporting a roof with a floor. Okay, perfect. Um, so I'll just use my bonus action to dash and get a good view on the dragon. Okay, absolutely. Using your bonus action with this, you just run out from under the pavilion and you see it, it's right above you. Oh, what does this stuff do? Do you try to use it? Yeah. Could you roll me a charisma check as you attempt to channel the energy contained within this powerful artifact and you feel the staff searching you, looking you over and determining your worthiness to wield it. Fuck, why did I do charisma as my dumb stat? My nightmare. Okay. That is a 10. But I will add a luck point if that doesn't work. I've got one luck point left. I'm going to say, because time stop. Crunch, I'm not sure if you can do anything. You can add luck. Yeah, I'll let you add luck points because that's Maverick, here. not Crunch, doing that. Yeah, yeah, that's. that's How many that's are you all. throwing? Get all six. So that's another. So I got three. faith in you. Okay. Oh so that would make fourteen. I've got, I've got two, so that will equal one for you, I think. So fifteen. I've got three, so I can give two to equal one for you. So that's 16. If you do all three, I can give all of my three, and then that would be... Uh, it's only in multiples of two. You will, well, could we each... Could oh, ours add yeah. together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll allow that. Okay, then I'll, I'll give one, and then uh, Daphne can give yeah. one, too. So that would be 18. Yeah. And I believe we are fully out of luck points. I ain't got shit. Yeah. So here's what happens. Fuck. You try to channel the energy of this staff, a truly powerful artifact. And it finds you unworthy. You begin to feel the energy that is inside of it course through your body like an electrical current where you haven't grounded yourself. But the camera cuts to crunch on top of the dragon. And then over to Daphne and Xandrus and Onyx, your friends who have trusted you and relied on you and given you that pretty picture. <laughs> and as the DC was 17, The consequence of failure, which would have been to immediately drop to zero hit points as a punishment, is avoided as the staff may find you unworthy, but not when you are alone. And so you gain access to the staff of power a hugely powerful magic item. Very rare. And if you want to pull that item up to see exactly what you can choose to do right now, Kibbles, you may. But I will also tell you, it has 20 charges. You can right now choose to use any of the following spells. Globe of Invulnerability. Fireball. Cone of Cold. Hold Monster, Levitate, Lightning Bolt, Magic Missile, Ray of Enfeeblement, or Wall of Force are all available at your disposal on this turn two. Also, as you are thinking about what to do, let me just say, Welcome Raiders! Thank you so much for joining. I'm going to jump back into my DM persona. Okay. You must give me a minute. I need to familiarize...
Okay. So I have two turns left, right? This is turn two. This is turn two. Yes. So you have this and one more. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start with casting Hold Monster. Okay. So many spells. All right. I pull this up. It must succeed a wisdom saving throw. Yeah. And the DC, because it is the Staff of Power, uh, using your spell save DC. Ooh. Um. But it's also frozen? Like, does that... It's a wisdom one is the problem. Um, mm. But... Where do you find your spell save, DC? Well, you don't have a spell yeah, modifier because you're a rogue. Um, what I will say as you are doing this, just so you know before you do this, if you cast anything or do anything that affects another creature, time stop ends. Okay. Just so you know. Hello. All right. Um, give me, please hold. <laughs> I need to go back to the wand of staff of power. I'm panicking right now. Okay. No need to panic. Your friends got you. <laughs> and just so you know, for funsies, this is totally not the way it works. So anyone watching this video, don't use this as a rule. But for rule of cool, you're a rogue. Your main stat is dexterity. So just for fun, use your dex bonus as your to determine your spell save DC. So that would mean for you, the DC would be 13 when you cast it. Wonderful. Okay, okay. I know there's a lot, but I'm going to have to ask you what you're wanting to do. I'm going to use my movement to cover like can I get to where my friends are and where Daphne is lying 100% I'm going to run there center myself as close as I can to everyone and I'm going to start with a globe of invulnerability around yes! great spell um, so a barrier in a mobile faintly shimmering barrier <sighs> 10 foot radius around you and your friends who are on the ground. So you managed to get everyone other than Crunch. Perfect. Um, and then, so that would be second out of the three turns. Correct. And so for the last turn, because it will be the end of time stop anyway, I will use the hold uh, monster. Absolutely. So it gets to make a wisdom saving throw here. It has a plus five. Your DC is 13, which means it needs an eight or above. And it got an eight on the die. Exactly. Okay. So as you cast this, everything suddenly... <laughs> Hold on. I need to time this right. I need to time it right. Hold on. As you cast this, <clears throat> all of the action suddenly starts once again. The wings... <clears throat> The defiant roar, Crunch flying along, it, the dragon going overhead, Daphne and Xandris and Onyx and you inside this faintly shimmering barrier. Daphne, you don't, you are able to see through bleary eyes and Onyx and Xandris, you see Kibbles standing where she was not before, holding the staff in her hand as this barrier finishes forming around you all. That will then bring up Onyx. What a turn, Kibbles! That is one what? of my first times ever getting to see Time Stop be used! Oh, I love this game. All right, Onyx. I'm not gonna be as awesome as Well, Kibbles. it's Time Stop! <laughs> I'm gonna first look over at Kibbles and go, where did you come from? Then I'm gonna look back at the dragon. It is passing right overhead. So inside the barrier, can we shoot outward or do we have to step out no, to shoot? No, you can shoot out, it's so good. Okay, 
so I'm gonna I'm gonna take aim. I don't have uh, any dragon arrows, but I have regular arrows, and I'm gonna shoot at the dragon. Okay, roll to hit. It's angry. Remind me again, is it the 21st, then the 8, or is it just the 8? Uh, so first you have to roll to hit, which is d20 hit. plus 20. Uh, your longbow bonus, which for you, under your actions, oh, you can see seven. it's a plus 7. You're yeah, a ranger. Okay. You are good at this. Okay, I have a 25 on the on the 20 roll. Oh, yeah, you hit. Easy. Okay. So after uh, hitting... Now you roll your damage. Okay, do we see how how bad he's he's feeling? I would say um, using a color system, like, you know, your classic hit bar in a fighting game or something, from green to flashing red, greenish yellow. Oh, oh my, God. my God. You've hit him once! <laughs> a 10. And you, and you took him to greenish yellow by yourself with another... Okay, fine, he's now definitely more yellow than green. As you send another arrow through this barrier as the dragon flies overhead, Crunch still on the back of it. Speaking of, Crunch, you're up. I forgot he was there. Cool, where, okay, so I am going to climb up to the point where I am at a good spot to try and swing on this motherfucker at this point. (laughs) Just like trying to move up on it, managing to get it. Go ahead, let's do this. You know what? Is it? Does it make sense to do this? Hold on. Does it make sense to do this? Because you already oh, raged. Remember that if you don't deal damage this turn, you lose your rage. Correct. Correct. Or don't take damage. You know what? Fuck it. Reckless. What I like to hear. Yeah, Reckless. with advantage. There Let's we go. go. All right, here we go. Here we go, baby. Come on, hit his bitch ass. <laughs> 18 plus five. That'll hit. The AC for this baby Ooh. is 18. Great. So um, we got four plus three plus two. That is seven, nine. Nine more damage. Definitely yellow now. Um, as you... <laughs> just hack down into it and the dragon tries to roll to roll you off. Could you make me a dexterity saving throw? Please, in response. Dexterity throw? Okay. Yes, please. 15? 15, you stay on. Your skin is a coat! (laughs) Yes. Fan friggin' tastic. All that right. ends my turn. Yep, that is Crunch's turn. That then brings up the dragon. So here is question number one is, does it regain its lightning breath? It needs a five Please or don't. a six on this die. Two. It does not oh, regain God. its lightning breath. So instead, it is going to spend its uh, movement flying directly into the ceiling. Could you please make me a sit dexterity saving throw, Crunch, as it oh, no. goes and slams up into the roof of this cavern? 18. 18. Wonderful. You do manage to avoid most of the damage and therefore take half of this. Uh, okay. Half of 12. So you'll take still take six bludgeoning damage as it slams up into the... Uh, into the roof of the cavern and tries to reach around to claw you as it's looking and trying to reach you. I'm going to say that your AC is functionally too higher than usual because of the fact that you're on its back. So, with a five on the die, uh, for a total of a 14, probably won't hit. So just... (laughs) cannot reach you as is flying, spinning, barrel rolling through the cavern, and you all just watch this. This thing is flying wild right now. You also notice, those of you on the ground, there are several other blue scales you see bolting for the exit. Just saying, not worth it, and leaving. Okay. Um, That is the dragon's go. Daphne, who is still down, 
Could you make me another okay. death saving throw? But again, just yes. a reminder, you can still speak. You can do this, Daphne. Come on, baby. A three. Three. One pass, one fail. All right. Is there anything you would like to do or say on your turn? I feel like with that failure, I don't really think there's any, I think that she's kind of fading in and out of consciousness. This isn't really there. Got it, got it. Xandris, you are up. Bethy, Bethy! Uh, and it's going to very indelicately. Oh, I am so sorry. What? I did the initiative order wrong. Xandris should have gone first before okay. Daphne. So with okay. Xandris getting Daphne That's up, helpful. Daphne, you'll actually get your turn. My bad. Yeah. Xandris. Did you know I was gonna get Daphne? Out? Well, you said Daphne, and I assumed you were. I, so uh, let's just see what you do. Down. You're a nice person. Let's see what you do. Let me, I could be let wrong. me see what I do. So I go over. Uh, Daphne, Daphne. Uh, very indelicately digging claws into your shoulders to pull you into my lap, and uh, she wraps her arms right over you, and she goes, Poof, and uh, it's cure wounds. One d eight plus three. There we go. Seven. And you are now awake, and that was my turn. Yes, that is what I was gonna do. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, Daphne, rewind. You are now on the ground, your vision clears. And you see Kibbles still standing over you all in a protective stance with the staff, Onyx and Xandris nearby. And you can just hear the sound of and rubble falling and impacting into coins and treasure. Along with the quiet sound of a few blue scales. Fuck this! <laughs> oh, fuck. Can't hear you. Sorry, I had loud animals, so I muted myself. I appreciate okay. that. <laughs> uh, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to stand up and then uh, I'm gonna look a little bit disoriented. I'm not totally sure what's going on, but this doesn't look good. There's still a dragon. Now, is Crunch on the dragon? Yes. Love that. <laughs> um, so I can't cast Fireball because I will kill my teammates. What am I gonna do? Know. You could reposition it. You could totally, I mean. Well, but I also would... dragons fires that always good against dragons anyway. But we could try, okay. I'm gonna try. Fireball has to... a long range, which means you could place it in front of the dragon enough that it would only hit the dragon's hit head. Hit the dragon. And there, yeah, or, to try to avoid hitting way. crunch. You could totally yeah. position it in such a way. Okay, I think I'm gonna try to do that. So I'm gonna take out the, the rare staff that I have and I'm gonna kind of just give a thought to our queen and use three of the 10 charges to cast fireball directly in front of the dragon so it'll hit the head as the dragon. I absolutely love it. Um, so that so is what I'm gonna attempt it's to It's going do. to make its deck save. You might as well roll the damage because it has to take damage one oh, way or the half. other. Oh, take half, okay. Yep. So it's just gonna- Now, I'm not totally sure what level- Which item cast. are you using? The staff, very rare, that you gave us. Requires oh, attunement by druid, sorcerer, warlock, beep, beep, or wizard. Beep, 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 beep. Uh, wait, that's a uh, staff of healing. Uh, no, it says you can use it. Oh, I'm looking at a different staff. Then. There's so many the staff staffs. Has, the staff has 10 charges. Okay, what Burning is Burning hands, fireball, or wall of fire. Got it. So it would be at the standard uh, fireball level. So, because uh, I'm a warlock, I cast everything at my highest level, which would be second. Does it, that work for me? No, it would cast it at third level because third? it's okay. out of the staff, not your level. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So, it's going to be 8d6 fire damage, and okay. it's uh, going to make its deck save. What is your uh, spell save DC? Uh, 14. It does pass. It got an 18 on the die, so it will take half damage. So, go ahead and roll that sweet, sweet damage. Okay. So I rolled a 28. 28 so that would half be to uh, half to 14. This thing is uh, 
looking a little rough as we again see, with the benefit of being the audience, we see as the fireball detonates, we see the young blue dragon fly through it with crunch on the back of it as the ball of flame just erupts. It is looking a little rough, guys. It's not doing okay. great. I should have done this first, but I will still do it for hopefully future turns that will exist. As my bonus action, I do want to use Hex. There we go. On the dragon. There we go. Good So call. that hopefully for future turns, I can do additional necrotic Now, damage. luckily, you didn't really cast the spell. You used the item. So I'm not going to count that as one of the two leveled spells that you can cast. So it has to make a, oh, it doesn't even get a wisdom saving throw. Ha <laughs> ha. No. Um, so yeah, in the future, it will take four attacks yeah. an additional 1d6 damage. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Okay, Wonderful. That, that will be my turn. I'll just blast. All, All right, Kibbles, you are up. That's my goal. <laughs> okay, so with the staff of power, uh -huh. do I expel extra charges to increase the level of a spell? Uh. Because I can't remember if you do or not. It doesn't say. Here. Yeah, it doesn't say. Uh, no, it specifies the level that it casts at. Okay, perfect. Then I am going to look over at Daphne. However, however, this is for funsies. And I would say that if you wanted to cast Magic Missile at a higher level, up to fifth level, because that's the highest... Uh, Actually, shoot, no. Up to sixth level, I would let you do so for that number of slots. I will not be casting that. Uh, I'm going to cast a fifth level fireball following fifth. Daphne's um, in, like direction, exactly what she does. I'm going to look over to her, copy her motions to the best of my abilities, and cast the fifth level fireball. So, and fifth level fireball is what it casts by default? So, so it's, that is going to be 10 d6 damage, please, as it rolls its dex. Even with your 13 spell save DC, it rolled a three. Oh, baby. So it is going to take full 10 d6 damage here. Roll! I don't do math, so take me a minute. Please hold. Thirty five points of damage. Crunch. If there is anything more disorienting than riding a newly shifted young black or young blue dragon and getting impacted into the ceiling. It is riding through two consecutive fireballs and then feeling the dragon's wings stop beating as it begins to fall. In this moment, as it is falling, what do you do to avoid impacting with it? <laughs> oh, did you turn into a... <laughs> I can't. I can't turn into a bag. I'll do it once. <laughs> you can fly. But that I was can fly. Oh, well, yeah, fly. you can fly. You're yep. Cheap. I will fly. say, you know what? Glory to Tiamat. Riff and tear, and we ride it down. Until it gets to a certain point that I'm going to pop the cape. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you just... And right before it impacts, all you do is grab the cape enough to basically stop falling. And it just... <laughs> and there is a sliding, clinking sound as it impacts into a number of piles of treasure which fall atop it and bury it with just a little bit of its spiked tail sticking out as a reminder of what was there. And I want to cut the tail off. It is suddenly oddly quiet in here. You all realize that you're alone. 
in the big pile. As the camera returns to all of you, what do you do in this moment of having achieved this goal of defending the Dragon Queen's hoard from the blue scales? Andrus, I saw your hand first, then Daphne. Um, so the this has all been hugely adrenaline inducing. Um, she almost lost her friends, things have gone all over the place. The only thing she can think to do, she's sitting on the ground with her legs spread wide, where she was holding um Daphne, and Daphne's up, done the thing, and she just looks at Crunch floating down and she just starts laughing as she pulls out her drum lays down on the ground looking right up and just playing a beat Daphne I will remind you you looked death in the eyes but a minute ago I I think that the first thing I do is like turn to Xandris and just give her a hug. Thank you. (laughs) I was pretty dead. And then I want to kind of take inventory and take out all of the treasures I got and sort of put them in a little pile in the big hoard. (gasps) And then I'll, I'll sit down next to Xandris. Kibbles. Um, I think Kibbles is going to be clutching the staff, like with white knuckle clutching it, and she's just going to fall to her knees and just start sobbing into the staff. Not doing anything else, but just on her knees sobbing. Brunch, Onyx? I think Onyx, after she would see it fall, she would look around at everybody and sort of seeing their reactions, she would just step forward and look up at all the glowing sort of veins in the whole room, sort of look around at everything and just sort of drop to her knees and sit there in silence as she just listens to everything around her. Crunch. Once uh, Crunch gets back on the ground, Look up, see the people he came with, his friends, Klepto, the impulsive one, the loud one, and the pretty one. And then the other and, four, or the other three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll take the cape off, put it with the rest, and just kind of drag baby over to the rest of them and just sit there. As you all have this moment of quiet, the camera fades from you here in the big pile. And we see what comes and follows. We see the five of you closing the door to the big pile behind you as you leave it secured. We see as you retrace your steps back up the lava river past the shrine of Tiamat, Tiamat where you pay your respects finally back to the red scale lair where you inform them of what you saw and what you learned about the fate of your dragon queen, Aramanthal Yavaraxana. And the camera fades. And we see the five of you crawling through tunnels. Strange tunnels. Strange smelling air. 
five of you, together, as you emerge from below ground in search of your dragon queen, in search of that sapphire that you saw her locked inside. And as you emerge above ground, we see as Kibbles looks up to a sky full of stars. See? I told you. You don't have to kill Crunch. Crunch keeps his promises. She's going to tear her eyes from the stars, run up to Crunch, and just give him the biggest hug before she just like starts to cry into his his chest and just starts crying. And it's all right. Daphne gets a little jealous and then also goes to stand by Crunch and get Crunch. <laughs> With the five of you, arms over shoulders, looking out at this new and dangerous world in hopes of rescue these kobolds with hopes of rescuing their dragon queen. That is where we end the story of the rise Four. of the Red Scales. Oh, cheers to the DM. Yay. Thank you all so much for telling this story with me. That was amazing. Got to see a ninth level spell be cast. Now, before I go around and let everyone say their farewells, before I lose any of you, first of all, please don't go anywhere so that we can raid another channel. Share that love, just like was shared with us. But I promised an announcement at the beginning. So here is that announcement, friends. If you enjoyed watching these five wonderful human beings playing this three shot together, you're in luck because there are plans afoot for us all to play a long-term recurring campaign. And let me give you a quick pitch, if I might. A city covered in mist, the old cars slowly creeping by, fog as far as you can see, except for when you look up and on top of a hill see a stretching skyscraper with the red letter Z visible from as far as the eye can see. That Z which all of us know stands for Stradia Van Zorovich. We will be running a turn of the century version of the Curse of Stradia using the Savage World's noir system, ideally, to be able to tell a more environmental and spooky story. I cannot wait to play this game with you, friends. Thank you so much for doing this. I love you all. If we could go around, if you want to say your farewell, farewells, if you have any announcements, things you're working on, where we can find you online, or just good old life advice, let's do that. So start us off, Mav. Hey everyone, I hope you guys had a wonderful time with us. I had a fun time playing a class I never played before and crunch, let crunch always be in your heart and your muscles. Thanks again. Daphne, or I'm sorry, Anna Margaret, we're out of character now. Hello, yes, I'm Anna Margaret. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of the story. This is absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to see you all elsewhere. And if you happen to be going to PAX East, I'm a guest and featured creator there. I'm also doing the makeup for the performers for Acquisitions Incorporated on the main stage. So you can watch some awesome D&D &D and know Excellent. that I did the snatched looks and prosthetics. So check it out. Oh, you're doing full prosthetics for them? We're doing some, yeah, it oh, should be fun. That's gonna be awesome. Amazing. Sally. Hey, Beans, thank you guys so much for hanging out. This was my first D&D uh, &D and everyone was so nice and patient with my terrible uh, dice rolling. 
But uh, we are doing a Starlight Children's Foundation this month uh, to raise kid uh, money for children in hospitals. So we're going to be doing karaoke streams and body paints. So you can find that on Twitch at any time. We did a Goth Princess Peach recently, mm -hmm. and I posted that for Mario Day, which is today. So happy Mario Day. That's right. And a big shout out to the DM. Thank oh. you so much for inviting me yeah. in on my first time. You yeah. did great. Natural. So, of course, you now did. I'm going to make you play a new system. <laughs> <laughs> Maddie. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm going to be a guest at the Island Fan Con, which is its first year ever actually existing in Victoria. So if anyone wants to come by and say hello, by all means, come say hello. I will be just as nervous as I always am. So it'll be great to meet anyone. And um, besides that, I will be working on some Baldur's Gate cosplays coming up pretty soon. Um, the voting is still out. So if you want to check out my Instagram and share who you'd like me to cosplay next by all means go do that um i'm gonna go have a panic attack now because i'm still fucking riled from that role <laughs> that oh yeah thank you and thank you ethan i have been wanting to play DD with you for two years and when i when you said yeah let's play last year at calgary i sat there just waiting and waiting to get the message so you. thank you so much for bringing me in and i cannot wait to um Fall in love with a beautiful vampire whore. All right. Thank you. Oh, yes. Because Femstradia is the best. And bring us home, Lauren. I'm going to mostly just be in Chris, my house. You just raided. I literally had oh it up God. to raid you. Yeah. Really <laughs> I had it pulled so up funny. to raid Crucifix. So we're going to have to raid someone else here. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Sorry, Lauren. Bring us up. Uh, uh, you rated in time to just hear that I'm not really doing anything. Everyone's oh, very so accomplished and, and putting all their shit together, doing great things. I'm loving it. I'm in the wings cheering you on, but I'm mostly going to be here um, practicing self-care, uh, crafting. I'm working on uh, several cosplays right now. I'm working on um, level 10 Fern. It's the hardest build I've ever done in my life. Um, I'm going to be working on Shadowheart as well as Orin eventually. Um, and a couple of other original creations as well. But uh, until then, you can find me warring with the internet on Instagram, 95% um, low or 1,000 faces cosplay. Um, I'll also be here, hopefully streaming some Nancy Drew. I'm all about those cozy games, babies. Um, but thank you for being here, and thank you for being part of this story. Thanks for letting me get to spend time. I just punched my desk with all these amazing people. And I just, I fucking love this. Couldn't have said it better myself. My name is Ethan. I'm online as Thousand Faces Cosplay or The Buff DM. You can catch up on our past uh, TTRPG content, including The Wild Beyond and the first two episodes of The Rise of the Red Scales on our YouTube, Thousand Faces Cosplay. You can catch me and Lauren on every other Tuesday, Identico as players, uh, Saturdays, most Saturdays where we are playing on Misty Mountain Streaming for another game, The Wild Beyond. But again, you can catch past episodes of that up until episode 8 on our YouTube. So please do that if you are into a cuter yet with dark undertones game, which is The Wild Beyond. And yeah, I'm on TikTok giving uh, TTRPG advice at the Buff DM. So if you ever want to, if you're bored, feel free to check that out. Friends... Thank you so much for playing this game with me. I appreciate it more than I can say. But again, I want to emphasize that here soon, like literally right after this, I'm going to talk to these people about when we can do session zero because we got to get back on this train with this group. It is way too good. So until then, stick around so that we can raid someone. I'm going to initiate that here in a second. And we appreciate you. Take care of yourselves. Don't forget to hydrate. Don't forget that you deserve to have good things, and you deserve to take a time for yourself, for self-care, and all of that. We appreciate you. Let's do this raid, and I was about to say stay wild, but that's the other game. You know what? I like that sign-off, so, oh no, I get to do this before we raid. I get to show the logo for, oh, yeah. for our uh, TTRPG oh, yeah. section. So, friends, yeah. before we sign off, I just want to let you know, go buff yourself. Go book. We'll see you next time, friends. Yeah.
Bye. And we are out. I desperately need to go to the bathroom. I would love. Me too.